Well, the Cuba Street Project is an intimate look at the place, the people and the food of Wellington's much-loved inner city street. Author Beth Brash joins us right now. It is really great to hear you. Oh, thank you so much. It's I've, great to be here. I've seen browsing through so many luscious recipes and good stories about people. I mean, obviously, you are really passionate about Wellington and Cuba Street. So why is that? Um, well, I I guess I, I'm not... I've grown up in hospitality and I love food and I came from a really foodie family. My mum was quite, I'd say, culinary, like adventurous, mm. if you will. Like we, um, she traveled around, well, they, they both traveled around Israel and brought back hummus to, wow. to us kids when we were like 10. So it was wow. quite um, sort of, you know, groundbreaking in the sort of early nineties. But um, yeah, and then I just, but I, didn't find myself in hospitality, but I just was really interested in the stories of people. You know, I really found that food tasted better when you just knew, you know, what people's backgrounds yeah. were, or why they did it. And so, yeah, I actually ended up going into film, but um, eventually started a food blog with my sister, just based on that sort of stuff, so. Do you think it would be fair to say, because that section of Cuba Street is pedestrianised, it's probably the best people watching spot in Aotearoa, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, you said the, the bucket fountain is just such an iconic thing. It's incredibly hideous, but you cannot, <laughs> you know, like you just, you, there's just no way any Wellingtonian would ever let it um, be taken down. Yeah. And actually yeah. on that, there's, you know, you see people put um, f dishwashing powder and stuff in there all the time, but there are some other interesting stories about antics that have gone on around that, eh? Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> Many people have bathed in it or done other things in it. Uh, yeah, mayors have climbed it. Um, yes, many celebrities have uh, jumped a, in there. A name and shame. Was there an Elijah Wood incident? Yes. What did he do? Um, I'm not sure I can say on daytime television. <laughs> what, did he, in the fountain. what did he do to the poor buckets? Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay, that's not as bad. He as contributed to the, the uh, flow, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been there since 1969, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yep. Um, and I, it was supposed to be just a temporary thing, but um, as I said, Good luck, you know, Good luck trying now. to get rid of that now. It's never going to happen, is it? I had no idea it was only supposed to be temporary. That's mm, crazy. Yeah. So let's talk about the restaurant Matterhorn, who are in this one, and obviously well-known to Wellingtonians. Mm. R.I.P. It's no longer there, but of course uh, an institution. Yeah. Well, it had been around for over 60 years, and I mean, it went through, much like many restaurants, kind of goes through different iterations, and so started just as sort of a Swiss chalet mm -hmm. and serving um, custard squares and, and um, fondue and those sort of things. And then um, in the, so then it's in the 90s, late 90s, then um, was taken over by just a, a bunch of sort of up and coming hospitality folk and they were sort of involved with music as well and, and really kind of gave it this new lease on life and so yeah it just became such an icon for for wellingtonians but uh for so many uh celebrities you know oh it did and also like fidel's cafe that was named after a social studies assignment wasn't yeah. it on cuban history mm -hmm. and it was actually visited by fidel castro's son yes yeah so this was crazy uh the day that i was interviewing uh roger we actually while i was doing the interview with him uh, we found out that he'd actually passed away. So out comes the rum and, you yeah. know, I mean, that, I that's think... That's so cute, but... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's... So what he... He was actually a nuclear physicist and he was in town and just wanted t to find out why on earth there was not only, like, one place, but multiple places mm. sort of um, associated with both Cuba but and his father's name. Um, Roger described his hands as the size of dinner plates, just mm. could remember the, that, that grip that he had. And they shared a lunch of cigars and rum. Yeah. And, Four yeah. course meal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, showed him um, in the end that, yeah, he just took him for a walking tour around um, or down Cuba Street. So, yeah, what a perfect. Uh, person to, to show them around. So just quickly, if you had to sum up one of, well, your favourite story in the book, what would it be? Um, I, the history thing, to find these, you know, find out all this history of the street, these iconic restaurants that, um, you know, I'd never been able to dine at, but talking to people and the, I guess the legacy that those places had, um, has then created of the street, 
Awesome. It was pretty amazing. Uh, we've run out of time, unfortunately, because it's a beautiful book. could talk a long time about it. But if you want to find out more about Beth's gorgeous book, The Cuba Street Project, it's available now from all great bookshops and online stores. Thank you, Beth. <laughs>